If there's one thing humans aren't great at, it's predicting the future. Just take a look around. No amount of crystal balls, fortune cookies, or tea leaves could predict the world we're living in right now. But unpredictability is also what keeps life interesting. The trick is to enjoy the ride without worrying about what's around the corner. Um, listen, policygenius.com is the solution to getting insurance of all kinds, especially home insurance, which is of huge importance. I know you have it. Um, I love Policy Genius because they don't they only do home insurance. They do health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance. And they can, this is one-stop shopping. They can shop for it all together. You yeah. put it all together. You answer a few quick questions about yourself, about your property, what you're looking for. Policy Genius compares your policy against options from other insurers and they make sure you're getting the right coverage. They've saved customers an average of $690 per year just doing that. If Policy Genius finds you a better rate than you're currently paying, they'll do all the work to get you switched. So all your apprehension about, oh my God, how do I do this? They take care of that for you. Of course, you own a car, they can take care of that. They can match, uh, mix and match your home and auto policies. So if you haven't found a play-by-play -play breakdown of your future inside a crystal ball or cookie, that's okay. Protect the things you've worked hard for and get home insurance with Policy Genius in just a few minutes. You can find the best price and apply at policygenius.com. Policy Genius will always get the future wrong, but get home insurance right. This podcast is brought to you by ShipStation. Look, Tom and I sell a lot of merchandise online. And when you're selling merchandise online, getting orders out can be a pain in the ass. How do you keep track of who gets what? What shipping carrier should you use? Are you getting the best rates? That's why you need ShipStation. It's the fastest, easiest, easiest and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. Just a few clicks and you'll be managing your, your orders, printing out labels, and getting your products out fast to keep your customers happy. ShipStation makes it super easy. We've been using ShipStation out of, out of burp, burp, burp .com for I think for two, I, I know the last full year. It helps you get your orders out quickly, saves you money on shipping costs, and keeps your customers happy. No matter what you're selling, whether it's Amazon, Etsy, or your own website, pertpertpert.com, ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, making them easy to manage from any device, even your cell phone. ShipStation works with all the major carriers, USPS, FedEx, UPS, even Amazon Fulfillment, so you can compare and choose the best shipping solutions for you and your customer. They even offer big discounts on shipping costs. Now, any business... This is so important to me. Any business can access the same postage discounts that are usually reserved for the large Fortune 500 companies. So now your business, small as it may be, burtburtburt.com, is just as big as those big Fortune 500 companies because you are always getting the best deal. No wonder ShipStation has the number one choice of online sellers. You'll ship more in less time with the best rates available. Right now, Two, ba two Bears, One Cave listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days, when you use the offer code CAVE, there, are, there is absolutely no risk. You can start your free trial without even entering in credit card information. Just visit just visit ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in CAVE. That's ShipStation.com. Enter the code CAVE. ShipStation. Make ship happen. Let's start the show. Two bears, two bears, two bears, two bears, one cave. Make it hot and looking good. Looking good. He's Bert Kreischer. I'm Tom Segura. But let's just put the pedal to the metal and go. go, go, go. This is a perfect way to start off this show. Twelve years in the making. This is gonna be a fucking shit show. Everyone's gonna, it's gonna, they're gonna hate us. A hundred percent. Cheers. Trans rights are human rights. Bro. Oh, my God. So, All I want to hear is we weren't recording yet. God damn it. <laughs> and we have the perfect intro to another episode. Wilkes-Barre, Schenectady, Beacon Theater, Washington, D.C., the Dorothy, Dollar Constitution Hall. That's this week. Oh, yes. There we go. Yeah. Um, there. That's a big room. Dollar Constitution Hall? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Are I'm you excited yeah. to play it? Very. Eddie Murphy, delirious. Oh, no. That's where he did it, man. I wouldn't be shocked if I wore... I've been thinking about razzle-dazzle in my pants. 
Yeah. Like really going hard with pants. Really going hard with pants? Like like Post Malone, uh, Dove Prints, Red Leather. I got a pair of Red Leather. I did a whole photo shoot. Put your fucking phone away. I did, I did. Do you I have did. shit that going on today? No, no, no. It's not like Fucking that. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 1-800-GOT-JUNK shows up and Tom <laughs> drops the podcast. Because he's the only one that can translate between his maid and his fucking got junk guys. <laughs> No, 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 so, que todo, todo basura. Trae nomás afuera. The, yeah, I want to go. I was thinking about going hard pants. Hard pants. Yeah, like like really leaning into well, like. Well, we're, we're setting up a, a dandy session with uh, somebody here in LA that they're going to they're gonna take us and do fittings and really lean into being dandies, our new uh, co friend hobby. I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait. Are you going to do a show in your dandy suit? 100%. No shirt? Rip off my shirt with suspenders underneath. Oh, nice. <laughs> Take this jacket off. Oh, yeah. Nice dandy hat. Have my mustache done up. Are you going to do bow tie? P- prob- probably. I think you're a bow tie guy. I wouldn't guy. be shocked if I did something different, like a cowboy. Uh, oh. Like, a, like something really. Bolo? I'm right? thinking maybe, n- I'm thinking 1800s dandy. 1800s. Like Doc Hollywood dandy. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's totally your world, man. I wouldn't be shocked if we had a whole group of dandies. What if we said, hey, guys, half off your tickets if you dress as a dandy? Oh, my God. You're going to really be getting some fucking dandies showing up. God. People Do you realize, get... you realize there was like I had a dandy point in my life in like eighth grade, seventh grade. I guess it's more like uh, being it was like uh, um, alt music type yeah, where I listened yeah. to the Smiths and the Cures and Su- Susie and the Banshees. But I was like I was like a softer dude then. You were? Yeah. I I wanted to do the suit thing so badly. You know, I did I did suits for two full weeks as a stand-up, like brought them on the road and wore suits for every show. Please, please say there's a picture. There's definitely, there's video. Where? I recorded my first album wearing a suit. Just audio. Yeah, audio. And you put on a suit for an audio album. Well, I was working the club, working it in a suit. Wait, were these like, hey, Ray Rice is going to talk to us after the game type suits? No, they were just like regular, you know, like a navy suit, a black suit, whatever. And, and yeah, but but what size were these? These were bigger. These were bigger suits, <laughs> but not like Steve Harvey suits. Like, they're not like oh know, shit, the O line must have ripped off his helmet in the middle of the Jeremy Shockey suits. What, no, they were just they were. They, I, I was bigger, but the suits were just normal. You know, three. Wait, do you suits. have a suit right now? I have a couple suits, like nice suits. I have a couple nice suits. So, okay. Let's take two seconds and talk And they're about great. Suits. They're fucking great. I don't man. own I own one suit and it's been worn at funerals, weddings, bar mitzvahs. It's just like here's the thing. I love the idea that you don't you really don't need an excuse to wear them, but you really don't. You can you can wear whatever you want to wherever you want. And you can. I mean, it's ridiculous to wear a suit to like show business things you know, which is a thing you learn when you get here i also wore a suit to the first day of an internship and they were like where are you going are you do you have a funeral after this and i was like i thought this was for here and they were like uh no this is los angeles and i was like oh and they're like do you have a finance degree so old, old fancy grimace comes walking in in his suit dude <laughs> fancy grimace and a big purple suit because tom has got why, that flair. Why am I doing purple? Back stripes. He looks like he's he's looking for Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> I would wear that suit too. But wait, you think you need an excuse to wear the suit? Yeah. Well, I've never worn. I've, I've worn a suit. I wore a suit the other day to a uh, to a um, Sweet Sixteen, and I was miserable. I thought, and then I saw some kids, like some other people, not wearing suits. And I was like, hey, how come they didn't wear suits? And they're like, oh, they don't really, you know, they're, it's, yeah. and I was like, I barely know the fucking kid. Like, what am I wearing a suit for? I hate it. It really bothers me when someone asks me to wear a suit. Yeah. Because we got to remember, I wear a suit. I don't, maybe, maybe. When I'm was in, the last time you wore a suit? The other, like, two weeks ago. Well, this was for that funeral? No, for, no, uh, for the Sweet 16. That's the last, but so you bought a suit specifically for No, that? no, no. I have one suit. My grandmother bought me a suit. Wait a minute. I have one suit. The, the the suit you wore to the Sweet Sixteen. The same suit I wore at a funeral. And wait, this is this is a suit that your grandmother bought you. My grandmother bought me, uh, probably fifteen years ago. What? My grandmother. How does me. it fit you still? It's a little tight at times. Yeah. Where did your grandmother buy the suit? Brooks Brothers, nice navy blue. Yeah. Dark navy blue suit. And that's the only suit you it's have. The only suit I. Don't own. you think it's time like you no. can get? Why? Why? Because when am I going to wear it? When so I going to buy it and then 
outgrow it. There's going to be new new funerals coming, and yeah, no, I I don't. What other event do you feel like you could wear? Why don't you wear a suit to dinner? With who? Your wife. What? What would she say? She'd say, "Wait, what the fuck's going on?" I would ne- I would never wear a suit. To- I would never wear a suit to dinner when I'm going to eat, and then it's just going to get bigger. They're very unforgiving. Like you can't. What am I undo the suit? Unless I get like a maternity suit where the it expands. Yeah. Yeah. I. I have I have nice shoes. If we do a live two bears at some point, would you wear a suit to that? No, no. No, I mean if we like we'll No, why, why would I ever wear I'm just gonna I will be so uncomfortable. Like I can't you know, I can't even wear a shirt on stage. I like I legit can't wear a shirt on stage. I think stage. that what what I'm gonna do, if we end up doing that at some point What live you, two bears? If we do a live two bears, you go shirtless, I'll wear a suit. I like that. I'll I like a that suit. a lot. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I I I end up if I put on a suit I don't wear a tie. I would never wear a tie with a suit. I can't wear a tie with a suit. Jesus. I feel like I'm getting fucking choked out. I can't wear a tie with a suit. I then, when I get there, the jacket comes off immediately. And I and then and then it's a matter of time before it gets untucked. Yeah. And then one, now I just look like a guy who's way too drunk at a wedding. Which I, you probably are. Which I usually am. Yeah. Yeah. I so just, wait, any wedding, if you were to be invited to a wedding next week, you'd, you'd pull out the blue suit? Blue suit. Every, every picture you ever see of me in a suit. You will never find another picture of me in a suit. I had a suit before then. My grandmother got me a suit. What the fuck is with the grandmother buying you the suits? <laughs> By the way, she's dead, and that's who no one's buying me suits. I wore that suit to her funeral. You did? <laughs> <laughs> I had one suit before she bought me this suit, and I wore it to the Emmys, to the Comedy Central. Not It wasn't the Emmys. I wore it to the Emmy party, Comedy Central yeah. Emmys party. And Amy Schumer came to my house and was like, we all left from my house. And she was like, you don't look comfortable. And it was so tight around my waist that like, have you ever put <laughs> pants on and you go to pull from one side to the other and they go, oh, that's not happening at all. Like I have never experienced that. But oh. I, I can imagine what you're saying. Cause you just wear sweatpants. I, <laughs> I have a very, I'll tell you what I wouldn't mind is I wouldn't forgiving mind a, physique. I wouldn't so. mind a sweatpants suit. That's that. I'm sure that exists. <laughs> sweatpants sure, suit. Yeah. I want I want to I want to lean into like a nice like if if we weren't going to do like what I'm looking for. Did you see did you see, God damn it. Did anyone see Birds of Prey? It's the new Harley Quinn movie. I did not see it. Is so it good? Ewan McGregor uh, I saw it with the girls. The girls loved it. And, and that's that, what it's for. I mean I loved it cuz I think well, that girl's fucking hot as shit. That's why. <laughs> yeah. I was like oh, we're watching it for definitely different reasons. How about that kind of suit? What's that? I would wear I wouldn't mind something like that. Like a nice stretchy like what i want to do is i want to get my face i want to get like a really nice like linen suit but get my face embroidered all over it (laughs) what a cool idea i'm really into track suits right now track suits are are i've been i've been fucking loving track suits yeah i like tracks and they're the best to travel in and the best to ride the bus in. Oh, They're just so easy. You suits. actually, the thing that sucks about wearing those tracksuits all day before a show is you're like, I don't want to take this off to do the show. Yeah, because tracksuits are like, tra- like tracksuits are like a forgiving friend. They're like, oh, bro, eat anything you want. Yeah, you feel great. Are you yeah. kidding me? Cheeseburgers. You're supposed you, to have a drink. You got yeah. this. Yeah. You. Why wouldn't you get a root beer? None of this is is doing anything to your body. Do you feel that we're still very comfortable? Yeah. And then you go to put jeans on, and jeans are like your dad, like. Hey, buddy, seriously, you look overweight. I mean, I'm not going to say it. I know it's Thanksgiving, but you should watch what you eat this week. Did did your dad say that exact thing? He did, right? My dad one time told me, he goes, this is like when I was well into being overweight. He was like, I think you're maybe starting to get a little bit of a gut. Like he was trying to, he was like wait so your dad's not judge like judgmental of you no not like that no oh. no oh. no i know your dad oh. is that's, oh. what, that's so funny this is my my dad can't help it we'll be eating things he'll just go don't do that <laughs> like i'll go to eat something or the number one thing he does if i'm if i am uh gaining weight he'll jump on their grenade for me really so say say uh say i go we, we're out to eat this is a i mean this is a perfect example. Okay. So we go out to eat and they go, what do we, what do you guys want? Dinner, dessert? And I go, you know what? I'm going to have, a, I'm going to have another beer. And then what's good. They'll go, uh, the tiramisu and, uh, and the thing with the hard rock on top of it, whatever it's called, you know, it's the fucking, we got to break it and then. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and I go, they go really? And I said, yeah, let's get that. No, no, creme brulee. Creme brulee. 
tiramisu and creme brulee. Let's get that. My dad will, when it gets there, he will eat all of it so that I can't touch it, and then he'll kill my beer. And he's like, ah. Oh, he's like, you don't want this as a joke, and then he'll take a big sip. But he'll, so he's doing it to, like, save you. To save me from eating it. And I'm like, I'm just going to order another beer and another tiramisu. Like, he he is, he is, he'll tell me the same stories about weight loss. Like, he is, a, are you going to text somebody? No. What, what are you doing with your fucking phone? I, nothing. We're doing a fucking podcast. Why are you doing this? Good God. Fucking WME. All right. Sorry. Jesus. This Mexican lady did not give me Diet Coke. It's Coke? It's Coke. And but it's don't so you, fucking Don't you feel good. like it's permission? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Is the lap dance cheating? I don't even ask. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you can put your dick in, in my dick in your mouth through your jeans, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, yeah, my dad. Did you guys go to a good strip club this last week? Uh, no, we haven't. The last strip club I went to is the best strip club I've ever been to. Where? Fort Wayne, Indiana. What? If I could name the name of it, I would. Wait, that's the best strip club? Uh, it was the most fun. The best strip club I've ever been to, without a doubt. South I mean, Florida. No. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to layer them, okay? So, like, I went to one in Russia that was, like, oh, gosh. was, like, yeah. I mean, literally was, like, no rules. You're, like... Uh, you know, we don't call this a strip club back home. Yeah. <laughs> um, I went to one in the best one ever, ever, ever is Mons Venus. But now you're talking about, we went there back in the 80s. Where is that? In in uh, Tampa on okay. Dale Mabry. I was going to say, Florida is known for like crazy. I mean, you just start the girl go, poke it out. And you're like, huh? Okay. Like, <laughs> I went to one in Florida when I was 15 and they were like, yeah, come on in. The, I told them I was, I, I'm 15. 15 years old. And I go, I'm thinking about like throwing a party here. And they're like, you want to come to the, you want to come to the back room, meet some of the girls. And they took me into the dressing room. And I'm sitting there a sophomore in high school, like, <laughs> like in their, in the locker Wait, room. Wait, could you shave then? Uh, yeah. You could, sh when, how old were you when you started shaving? Like, uh, you know, the mustache part, probably like 13 and then sideburns. 14. So this is the, are you, okay. In order to hear this story properly, yeah. you got to know what Tom Segura this is. Yeah, this is true. a very attractive, chiseled jawed, yeah. full haired, almost looks like an offensive line coach, Tom Segura. Right, and I'm at 15. I'm uh, I'm like 215 pounds. You know, and, and whatever you are, five eight. They're like yeah, yeah, five six and a half. And so you walk in, and yeah, Sorry interrupt. yeah, yeah. Oh great. The fucking Stanley the Cup. Stanley Cup is here. Yeah. Uh, Are you being serious? Right here? Yeah. Is this really the Stanley this Cup? This is the real Stanley oh, Cup. Hey, Are you? Hang on, hang on. Spin around here. Is this the fucking Stanley Cup? This is the Stanley Cup. This is a prank. This no, is a prank. This is the real Stanley Cup. This is the real Stanley Cup? Yes. But yes. how do I know that it's the real Stanley Cup? Yeah. By the way, this happened to me with a cop one time. <laughs> uh, this oh. is really amazing, man. Look how beautiful this is. Can Hold I ask on. you something? Yeah. Are we allowed to drink out of it? No. No. Oh, by the way. You got you to gotta be around the winners to do that. You got to? Okay, okay. I mean, they, the person who... Here, sw swing around here so we can see your face, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is absolutely amazing to look at. Wait, how did this fucking show up here? Are you in the wrong room? Well, Wayne Gretzky's next door, so they figured he could just pop in here and do this real quick. I got a phone call from the NHL or an email that said, Come up here and be here for around 2.30. Here I am. Thanks Are so you much. shitting me? Yeah, this yeah. is why you changed it. You didn't have a fucking meeting. <laughs> no, You're no. You're such I, a fucking I, liar. I did, I did. I did. I did. And that's why I was texting, though. So when you, when you talk about texting. See, the thing is about baseball is it's just a great sport, man. <laughs> and <laughs> so, so I know. Wait, so, so this is. Hold on. So give us a little. Can you give us a little bit of. Like, do you know any of the history of? Oh yeah. Okay. So tell us. I've been how, traveling with it for 21 years. For 21 years. Yeah, this is the best relationship I've had in 21 years. <laughs> I live on the road with it. So, so why? Why? Uh, give us like a little history on. Yeah, Stanley Cup's 128 years old. Stands 34 and a quarter inches tall. Made of um, it's 37 and a half pounds. 97 percent silver, 3 percent nickel. Uh, it started off just as the bowl back in 1893 and started to grow. Uh, it was a little taller, more cylinder-like in 1947, and then they redesigned it to the shape that you see before you today. It doesn't get any bigger. We retire rings. This ring's going to come off in 11 years. 
move all the rings up. Really? Ring, That's how it happens. I was, I was wondering. I was wondering. This says 1904, and then you jump right to 1973. I was like, "That's a lot of." So wait, the work. ring comes off in a in a very like deliberate and and special uh, way that like preserves it. Yeah. So then, I mean, it'll go into the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. Uh, get enshrined in uh, the Esso Great Hall uh, where the actual original bull sits. Everything's original, but the actual bull itself. Mm -hmm. And it'll go into a vault and it'll be cut in half and mounted on a wall for more generations to see. And um, so for our listeners um, who, who don't or are not watching right now, you're wearing white gloves. You take extra special care of this. How much does this weigh? 37 and a half pounds. 37 and a half pounds. And so when a team wins, do they... They do they get the a replica or everybody? No, they play for the real they, thing. They, they get play the for they thing. get the real thing. When they get it, they get it for they get it for the year. No, they get it, uh, each player. Well, they get uh, the team gets a hundred days with it. So pretty much from the night they win till when the season starts. Uh huh. And we travel literally around the world with uh, the organization because we got players from all different parts of the world. And uh, they'll get to travel they, with it for a minute. Yeah, they get. To, we'll bring it to their hometown, whether it's in Canada, here in the. So, US. like, if a team has a Ukrainian player, yep. you'll you'll I've fly. There. And, okay. You fly to the Ukraine, and you're like, "Hey, Vlad, guess what I got for you?" And he's like, "Oh!" And show it to someone. Someone grab yeah. the goat. We're gonna put milk in it, huh? <laughs> was that the Ukraine in your experience? No, that's not no? the Ukraine, and it was Ruslan <laughs> Fedotenko. <laughs> Ruslo, Ruslo, eh? Hey, um. Did you, were you ever surprised at the quality of strip clubs in some of the places you visited? Well, first of all, I'm from Canada, so uh, nothing touches uh, Canada in that. Wow. But the, cup, the, but the cup doesn't go in strip joints. That, no. Those, those days are long. Wait, what's th the weirdest place the cup's been? Maybe Afghanistan. <laughs> it was in Afghanistan? Holy shit, it signed up for the military? <laughs> we went to visit the military and see the troops. So um, literally to be in the middle of a war zone was pretty wild. Was that scary? Like terrifying at all? Uh, yeah, no. Uh, the first, I went over there on three different occasions with the cup, and the first time I went over, uh, after we got on the ground, we did all this press and stuff that, and dealt with the top brass, and one of the generals asked me if we could go visit some troops at another base. And I'm like, well, the NHL doesn't want me leaving Canada, but let me ask you this. Are you coming with me? He goes, absolutely. Next thing I know, we're up in the air with the U.S. Marines flying us across the ground and guns pointed at the ground in case we got shot at. Didn't know at the time, but Special Forces was following us in case we did get shot down. We got the Ford operating base, and the place went mental when we got there. It was amazing to see my wow. hockey fans and jerseys that came out. And when I got back into Kandahar, I went back to the barracks where I was staying, and the air raid siren went off. Well, I didn't get any of the safety briefing, so I didn't know what the heck was going on. And so I'm just sitting on the cupcase reading a magazine while the fighter jets and apparently we were under attack. I didn't see any missiles, but Holy apparently shit. there were missiles coming into the base, and I was the only guy that didn't take cover because, again, I missed the safety, safety briefing. That's, that is wild but yeah. is is this does this have a uh, like when you're going let's say base to base or what or whatever even traveling in a non-war zone does this have like a special case that you then put it is yeah it does it's just outside in your yeah. lobby we'll okay go grab it leave us alone with the cup for a second <laughs> yeah good yeah. idea yeah. <laughs> can we touch this you can, totally can yeah. touch it okay so so um all i'm thinking about is a promo when was the last time washington dc won the uh, the cup over here okay hey someone grab my phone Oh, shut up. That was two years, was ago. Two years ago. Yeah. The Washington Big Capitals. fan over here. St. Louis Blues. By the way, I went to my first hockey match in, uh, in, in L.A. I went to see the Kings play. It was fucking awesome. I grew up yeah. in Florida, so we didn't have Canadians. You know, I was uh, I was in St. Louis. You mean half of Canada lives in Florida. Now True. they do. Now they do. Back. But I was in St. Louis when they were um, uh, in the conference finals. Uh, that year, what two years ago, right? Or last year was it? Uh, last year. Last year, and uh, it was mayhem. Like, because I was playing in the venue attached to their arena. Oh, okay. And so the city yeah, was, yeah, the, was the, going. The, the, the theater there. Yeah, the Stifle. Yeah. Yeah. This is so fucking insane. So they put they put every single player's name on here. Yeah. So it goes uh, ownership, upper management, coaches, trainers, and players. Fifty-two names per year go in the cup. Fifty-two exactly. Yeah, and 52. sixty-five. Sixty-five years is the longest. Fifty-two is the shortest you can be on the cup. This year's winner is going to go right over here. I know we're on radio. But oh, and who's going to win this year? Uh, that's a good question. First team that gets the sixteen wins, I guess. And the, hey, are you traveling year round? So it's never parked officially for a long time somewhere. No, it's. I mean, we're on the road about three hundred twenty some odd days a year. Yeah, I'm on the road about two hundred plus of that. Um, it does go home to the Hall of Fame once in a while. If you go to the Hall of Fame today, you you'd see the replica. Uh, and along with the original bowl and the cup 
or in the in the vault. But this is this is the presentation. This is the one that goes on this. the ice. This is the one the players this get. So Let me ask I mean, you this: You're touching the same thing that every great player that's hoisted the cup is touching. What is um? What's the most disrespectful thing you've seen done? That's what I want to talk about. I want to hear crazy cup stories. Yeah. You know, it's it's not quite like everybody thinks it is. No? I mean, back in the 80s and 90s, before there was a keeper and before they had kind of control, if you talk to guys in the 70s and 60s, they didn't get five minutes with it. Some guys never even held it when they won it. Really? Uh, yeah, I got a little out of hand in the 80s and 90s, and the league was going to dial it right back to the way it used to be, where it goes on the ice and then back to the hall. But they did a lot of really cool things with it, and, you know, guys will eat out of it, drink out of it, of course. I imagine on top of the mountains fishing. And guys respect it. I mean, they've worked their entire life for this. That's um, true. You know, it, I mean, when alcohol does come in, there's That's what common I'm saying. sense does go out. Or there's alcohol, courage. there's but cocaine, yeah. and then there's the girls. Way, I was willing to get a DUI with this cup today. Like, oh, I yeah. drove here, and I was like, when he showed up, I go, looks like I'm drinking. Yeah. That So so they drink out of it? Drink mo maybe Molson? Drink a variety of beers. A lot of beer. So champagne. the only people, though, that really, that you got to be there, like, at a winning moment. Yeah, you got to be, a, I mean, it has to be held by one of the guys who has their name on the cup for you to be able to drink out of it. That's a rule? That's a rule. It has to be held by yeah. one of the guys. Just because, again... Back wow. in the time, accidents happen, and the thing wasn't going to last another hundred years if we kept yeah. going. And you know, it is. Do you have to tough. get? Does it? Does it happen regularly where you have to get aggressive for somebody trying to do something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When was the last time you had to smack a wrist with the cup around? Like, whoa, 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 whoa! We don't put other friends' dicks in the cup. Things like that. Uh, <laughs> We're not running a train on the. Stop it! God damn. People have. Catching. I imagine you've. Tr people have tried to piss in the cup, right? I, I mean, I had one incident where I, some guy was trying to do something and I, and he was a big boy and I knocked him down and just gave it to him. And, uh, I thought to myself, this guy gets up, it could be a little scary, but, uh, I said, yeah, no, nah, I, you know, oh, God, is he jacking off in the no, he was not. No. He, he was trying to do something stupid and I just knocked what him. Was down. What was it? What was it? He was, I looked like he was trying to pee in it. He's trying to pee in it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, see, that, that's disrespectful. I mean, what did the guy look like? Did he look like us or was he like, you know what I mean? He looked worse than you guys. Okay. <laughs> That's not what I meant, but uh, can we so do? You're uh, saying he was in shape. <laughs> <laughs> can we do some photos? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, come on, bro. Let's fucking. Pictures. Are you shitting me? This is so uh, fucking cool. Mike, thank you so much for bringing the Stanley Cup. You had a trivia question. We'd love to guess. Your question was. Yeah. How many regular cans of beer does the Stanley Cup hold? I feel like that's got to hold more One, than you two, think. One, like, two, like. So it just goes to like three, again. I don't remember. Right. Right to there. I'm Eight? Guessing, oh, yeah, I'm going to guess six. Six, eh? Yeah. Eight? Wow. Not, not bad, but 14. 14. What? Wow. 14. Now, as a good Canadian boy, you don't put 14 in because six of them fall out, and that's just a crime. Right, right. <laughs> that's, how called, that's called alcohol abuse. Right. Oh, yeah, because I guess in order to pour it in. <laughs> yeah. But I've seen it right to the rim, and it's 14 exactly. 14, man. Damn. This is really, really, really cool. What a unique job you have. Yeah. So let's let's do a let's do a game, okay? We're sitting on an airplane, and uh, and I go and you you be you and I'll be me, okay? Um, <clears throat> hey man, uh, you flying home or flying to work? Probably going to work. Oh really? What do you do? Uh, <laughs> the the honest answer is yes. I'm the keeper of the cup. If I'm want to just sit there and sleep, I sell insurance. You looking for any? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm an abortion doctor. I'm gonna go to sleep too. <laughs> <laughs> You're the keeper of the cup. Is you that work your, for Game of Thrones? Do you, that is your go-to, though. Insurance, like I have a. Uh, I mean, most time, no. I mean, you guys probably fly a lot. I, you, you sit down. Nobody usually talks. You get the odd yeah. person, and sometimes I'll talk and, and explain what I do. But if you usually, sense, yeah. as soon as you yeah, mention yeah. what you do, it opens up a thousand questions. And your next thing, you know, I was, I was going to say, I bet if you if you hear in a Canadian accent, that's what I was about to say you're too. Like, you're like, uh, uh, man, I sell pens. Like, it, like cause you know, it's really going to go so, deep. So, what you do for a living, huh? If that's his Canadian accent. <laughs> I, he's, he does mostly yeah, impressions. <laughs> so, so, what you do for a living? Oh, I'll take a Molson, please. Oh my. So, he's, why are you going home or to work? Are you Dutch now? <laughs> Sounds Asian. <laughs> he is. You should hear my Asian accent. He has spot on. Just so you know, he's got a. Get paid for impressions. Wow. He, he has a. He has a pretty wild reputation. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him. I actually okay. seen him before. Okay. On okay. Comedy okay. Network. All right. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did you find it enjoyable? <laughs> I went his shirts off. That's What's it. the Club de Hockey Canadien? Uh, Club de Hockey Canadiens, French way of saying Montreal Canadiens. Oh. How do you feel about Montreal? I like Montreal. It's a great organization. Their names are on there the most 24 times. 24? Yeah, followed by the Toronto Maple Leafs with 13 and Detroit 11. Fuck. Wow. I didn't realize that 
Montreal has double. Yeah, they haven't like Canada. They're the last Canadian team to win the cup in 1993, and and it has not been won in Canada since then. That's got to kill the country. Well, again, there are a lot of Canadians on a lot of teams down That's here true. in the U.S. I mean, you look at St. Louis. I think majority of their well. I know for a fact, majority of their team was full of Canadians, had a few Europeans and a couple of Americans. But, but like, so the Cup has made many trips to Canada, but... Oh, yeah. Well, that's where play. its home is, too. Right, like right. The Hall of Fame. But still, uh, a Canadian team needs to win, man. Be nice to see someday. We'll yeah. See what happens. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, look, man, this was awesome. This was um, fucking way... I did not see this happening today. This is really cool, man. Yeah, and yeah. by the way, I don't even really follow hockey. I mean, I, I just personally, I think I'd be a superior goalie, but but that's I think I missed my window unless someone wants to give me a shot. Yo, I just noticed this right here: two thousand four or five season not played. Yeah, so, and why go out of the way to make that decision? Because it's a running piece of hockey history. Um, okay. what, I mean, it, it happened. Uh, whether it's a good thing or bad, I mean, it, it definitely changed the way our game is for sure. Um, it's never good to lose an entire season, but in nineteen nineteen, it was also not awarded due to the Spanish influenza epidemic. And uh, they canceled the Stanley Cup final with Seattle Metropolitans versus the Montreal Canadiens in 1919. And it says right on there, series not completed. So when the, we lost the entire season, uh, we felt it was important. Uh, yeah. Gary Bettman agreed uh, that it was good to uh, mark the, the cup that we lost, lost a year. I mean, it played through both world wars. Unreal. I could sit here with this cup all day do you ever get drunk by yourself at, the, at your house and just like kind of just go through it and look at it like a like a like a fucking phone book <laughs> yeah i mean i sit around with it at my hotel room to my house at home um whether i'm on the road or at home a lot of times during the stanley cup playoffs i crack out the stanley cup and stanley and i watch the stanley cup playoffs uh, together having a couple of beers Jeez, this thing never leaves your side uh, I mean, me or another guy. Yeah, the only time we're really separated is when we when we fly. Once we check it, uh, you we, check the we, cup? we have no choice. Things no change choice. a lot after nine eleven. Yeah. So, um, so you used to like fly with like in the seat. Yeah, back in the day. I mean, we've done it once since nine eleven, but to do one flight with a lot of logistics, it took three weeks to set up for one flight, and we're we're on a plane every couple and of days. When you're like flying at home for Sasha in the Republic of Georgia, you check it like on multiple connecting flights and everything? Yeah, connecting is always a little nerve wracking. I mean, we were coming back from uh, Siberia, Russia this year and everything went smooth going through Russia on Sib Siberian Airlines. And then we uh, got to uh, Munich and checked in with Lufthansa and unfortunately it didn't get on the plane there. So I'm in Toronto on the Cups in Munich. And you know, the unfortunate thing is every day is a big day. There's always events going on. And, and then during the summer, it's a really big time because each member of the, of the team gets it. And how long, what's their dis distinct amount of time with it's it? It's a day. Yeah. Usually first thing in the a morning day. until about midnight. So wow. you show up, you show up like 10 in the morning. And you're like, all right, what are we doing today? And he's like, okay, first we're going to my mom and dad, my, me mom and daddy's house. And then we're going, and then we're going to my buddy's house. Then we're going to uh, my agents. Then we're going to like, they, they plan a day. No one's just like, Oh, uh, I'm going to sleep in. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, it's exactly. And it's do we, it's do you a need... hard schedule day, especially if it's your first time ever winning it. Depending um, on the, the, the level, let's say the status of a player, do you have like extra security if they're, you know what I mean? Like a more notable. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, up to the player's responsibility to get oh, it extra is. security. I mean, they know, uh, yeah, obviously, if it's a big name player and the cup. I mean, uh, what's the story the, behind this dent right here? I mean, here? there's been nicks and bags. Is there a story I here? always say, let's see what you look like at 128 and party. Is list that records, okay. right? Okay. So it's in pretty good shape for how yeah. old it is. I mean, there are, it's but this one seems pretty pronounced. Yeah. I mean, the you trophy know? doesn't hide behind glass like any other trophy. I mean, yeah, it's right. out in it's the community the every day. I feel like you're world. talking shit to other trophies right now. Like, no, no, this yeah, might be yeah, the number one yeah. trophy in sports. I don't oh, even yeah. know much about hockey, but I know how much fun this, you know, is. hockey, 11 guys on the field, at the same time, different bases. You get, you run home and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. score. Yeah. Hockey. And, yeah. So wait, can I can I make an offer right there, right now? If uh, there is anyone six grand, can who, we keep it? <laughs> <laughs> Throw a few more zeros. Out. Okay. If there is anyone who wins the Stanley Cup at the end of the year and they want me to be a part of their package for their one day, I will party with them morning until night. It'll be on my dime. They don't have to pay me. I will fly out and party with you at the cup. I would love to have a day partying with the cup. Could you we, let we just uh, put that out there? Some of the I higher ups the, know. I can let the guys know. Well, I'll wait till June when they win it, but I'll throw it out there. And yeah, yeah. The team that wins. And no one's ever been like, "Can I have sex on top, like above the cup?" That's a yes. Oh, that's a yes. Of course. I don't know. Bingo. <laughs> of course. Right, look, it's and was that guy's name Brian? <laughs> it's 128 years. It's had. I've heard a lot of different stories. Was that over guy's the days. name Sydney? <laughs> No, it was oh. not. <laughs> All okay, right, biggest, uh, wait, last question, last question. 
number one madman who you're like, no, 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 I'm not going back to his house with the cup. I was like, it was like the hangover last time I was there. <laughs> No, you know what? Even, it, no, you know what? No, nah, there's a couple of guys, and their pra- parties are pretty wild and crazy. Uh, but no, I've never said, oh, I never. Like, the guys are great. You know, we had a great group of, of players, coaches, and trainers in, in the NHL. And, you know, it's it's always a fun time. Guys are, guys are good. Like, I've never ever gone, oh, I don't want to do it. Can we that. quickly, uh, can we check out the case? Can we go out there and check out the yeah, case? Yeah, totally. I think you're going to say, can we quickly engrave the names of our tours and specials? Is that it? cool? Are you down with sure, that? Yeah. Yeah, hey, big right. boy, birdie boy world tour, take it down. What's the name of yours? Still eating? What's the name of your special? <laughs> Ball hog. Ball. Don't say anything racist. The cup is here. Oh. Has anyone ever like, know, done racist. something super racist to the cup? No. Okay. Bert, go for it. <laughs> What's the name? What would someone do racist to the cup? I don't know. That It's silver. Maybe you don't like the color. <laughs> I could see you coming up with something. <laughs> I'm not racist, sir. <laughs> you know how, you know how. I'm not racist. <laughs> the game's know, over. I'm not racist. You know how like non-racist people are always pointing out that they're not. Let's go check out that case. <laughs> All right. Hey, thank you very much, yeah, sir. This is amazing. All right, guys. Thank thanks you. for having us. You know, I meet a lot of people on the road and one of the first questions I get is, are you a professional athlete? And I get that <laughs> because I really take care of myself and I analyze everything I'm doing. We're all looking for ways to be healthier, whether it's getting to the gym more often, being smarter about nutrition. I'll tell you what I'm really on top of these days is my sleep. Ooh. I love, I wear this thing 24 seven. It collects and analyzes physiological data, uh, like the strain I'm putting on my body and like the sleep I get. And then you're so dialed in to how what you did affected you. So you might be like, oh, I was out late. I had a couple drinks. Uh, then you see the sleep you got. You realize how you feel and you start to make adjustments. I know, for instance, now having worn this thing that personally for me, if I get sub six hours sleep, I'm just not going to have the kind of day where I feel like I'm on top of it. I'm just not. It's, and it's amazing because this whoop also gives your heart rate variability, your resting heart rate, yes. your sleep runs it all through their algorithm algorithms and then gives you back that information. And that is how you can correct bad habits. It's true. And you get a sleep coach, you get a strain coach. Hey, step it up today. Do this thing. If you're looking to be smarter about how you sleep, recover and train so you can be your best you have to get Whoop. For our listeners, Whoop is offering 15% off when you use the code BEARS at checkout. Go to Whoop.com. That's W-H-O-O-P.com. Use the code BEARS, B-E-A-R-S, at checkout to save 15% off your order. Unlock your best self today. If you're listening to this podcast right now, I want you to take a look. No, not there. Look down. Look at your junk. How's it shaved? What's it look like? Does it look like a mess? Does it look like a fixer-upper that should be on DIY networks? Or... Does it look perfect like mine? Nice and high and tight at the bottom. And then what I do is I trim back the top. A little more sidewalk. You got to give it a little fade. Yeah, I give it a, I go, little. I take it back and yeah. then trim in like a Caesar and then cut back the bushes, a little more sidewalk. That is why I use Manscaped. They've got the new perfect package 3.0 evergreen. 3.0, Let man. me tell you something. At my size, it is a little hard to see your junk, okay? So if you... <laughs> And let's, let's point something out here. You don't have to be that fat to not see your junk. It's hard to see your balls sometimes. It is. So, so it's so nice to know that you would have clippers that have the... Uh, skin safe technology. Skin safe technology so that you can go down there a tad bit willy-nilly yep. and make sure your junk is safe. I also use these clippers on my mustache because they have an LED. I know. I go A to M. And yep. then I, they've got an LED light that lights up right here where you can find those little straggler hairs that play with you. I know uh, you're not supposed to use it for that, but I use it for that. The Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof. You can Cord- be aggressive with it. It's great. Yeah, you can. Cordless body trimmer. So you throw it over by the, potty, potty, by, by the side of your sink. Yeah, I'm having a stroke. And it's the third generation trimmer featuring cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped Advanced Skin safe, safe technology. And let's not forget about the crop preserver. It's an anti chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're already putting balls in your armpits. Why wouldn't you put them on your junk? It's the smelliest part of your body, if you ask my wife. When you purchase the new Perfect Package 3.0 kit at manscaped.com, you get the biggest bang for your buck. Subscribers will get new replacement blades, refills for your lawnmower trimmer delivered right to your door every three months to make sure your trimmer is always so safe and so clean. For a limited time, subscribers get not one, 
but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, a value of $39, and the Patent High Performance Anti-Chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs. I work out in these boxer briefs. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code CAVE at manscaped.com. Do yourself a favor and always use the right tool for the right job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAVE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code CAVE. Your partner, your body, and your balls will thank you. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> so I got a call that last year that someone told me, they're like, oh, there's this NHL event and somebody is a fan, like somebody at the NHL. Yeah. And I, I was on tour. There are so many athletes fans of yours. I think we kind of are drawn to each other. Athletic guys and athletes are like, sort of like, you know what okay, I mean? Like they okay. were like, you train, I train. Like, yeah, like yeah. you want to hang? I was like, yeah. You okay. ever notice it's retired athletes? <laughs> or go. <laughs> yeah, I noticed like just like powerlifters and me are just kind of <laughs> really kindred spirits. No, so they, they said, you know, this, somebody there was a fan. Also, by the way, I got a, a big fan high up at NASCAR. Um, they're like, oh, NASCAR wants you to do this event. I was like, okay. Uh, I've never watched a NASCAR race. Right? Whoa, 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 uh, We've got to get out to the track and challenge each other racing. Oh, I'm they, in. They can do that. They can do that in Tal. I think in Talladega, we did it at a track for trip flip. Yeah, where you can go out and they get you in one of the cars. We can do time can... lapse. Yeah. Oh, we have to do that. Sure, let's do it. Hold on, that has to be done. Yeah. Oh my god. Even if god. we don't do it, could uh, we do this show where we did something that, like that and then played it up here and yeah. talked about the event? Sure. Because that would be fun as fuck to do, and then put the event out online. But us playing it because it's just like like people always tell me that your dance video. Yeah. The hardest I ever laughed was me watching your dance. Video. Of course, of course. Because I was dying. Well, we could do. By the way, we don't have to do NASCAR to do that. We could go to a track. Yeah, but I want to go NASCAR. Why? I, I love NASCAR. Have you ever been to a NASCAR event? No. <sighs> They're awesome. They're fucking awesome. In the infield. Yeah. Like that? You like Sound that? Effects? You like the tires being changed? <laughs> <laughs> soda, soda, soda. Come on, get out of the pit. But I'm saying we, we could go do time lapse at any track with with a car. You know, the same car. And yeah, I would. But I, 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 Na I went to one NASCAR I'm event. not opposed to doing it there. I'm just saying it's accessible. Let's do. I say what we do. What if we did a matchup the way Rogan does... Uh, is UFC? Yeah. What if we did a show together at a NASCAR event? Mm -hmm. Like we do it, and then we go to the NASCAR event, and then we come home. And let's go to a big one, like Daytona or Talladega. You want to go to there, do a show there. I want to do a show the night before, so and we can deficit fund our trip, uh -huh. and then go do, then go to the NASCAR the next day. Yeah. And why don't we do, why don't we even do a two, a live two bears, one cave up the way they have their commentators. Hey, it's Bert and Tom. We're here at Talladega. We can do it. And man. we'll live stream it. We could do it. That would be fucking awesome. Um, yeah, we could do it. So, all right, let me finish telling you the hockey thing. All right. Okay. So the hockey, they wanted me to do something last year. I said, I, I couldn't do it cause I was on tour. And then literally a couple days ago, I got a call. Hey, um, the NHL guys reached out and said the Stanley cup is in town. Do you want it to visit you? And I was like, uh, yeah, like <laughs> where, when? And they're like, no, it's up to you. Like what day works? And I was like, Wednesday. And then they go, they got back to me. They're like, yeah, Wednesday works. What time? And I go, well, can they come to the studio? And so I tried to coordinate it and I, and then I tried to coordinate it cause I had to move my, our time for the oh, meeting. Oh yeah. You had to coordinate it again. So I had to go, no, no, go back to them. Ask them if they'll come. And I wanted it to be as we were recording. So they would just come in with it. It was so, the perfect surprise. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't think it was real. Yeah. I really didn't think it was real. Like I was like I was like, there's no way. There's no way. And then I saw the base and I was like, there's no way they put that much detail into like a, a gag. Fake, a gag. <laughs> I was like, this is insane. And then Like you, how I start remember when we did this first episode of this and I had Hannah and now you guys are like friends. <laughs> I had her in I a star today. <laughs> I, I had her in a cocktail <laughs> dress. <laughs> I totally degraded her. Now she's my spin and teacher. You were like, mm. Uh, yeah, look at that decolletage. Nice. Yeah. Dude, she works out. Yeah, no shit. She's my trainer now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Your neck was breaking on you. were like, yeah. it's so I feel so horrible. <laughs> You're like, I just saw you as when a she saw, when slam she's... piece. <laughs> I just saw you as a slam piece. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a human. 
I didn't see you as a person before. <laughs> yeah. And no, it's so weird when you start treating women like as people. Like, <laughs> has that been a, a real challenge for you? <laughs> I'll be in the spin glass sometimes. Oh, God, I remember when I thought of her. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. And then, oh. Whew. Would you have hooked up with her? Who? <laughs> Would you have hooked up with Hannah? No. Like, no, no. Probably then, not now. <laughs> probably then. But, but then I would have been like, oh, like if I was single, I would definitely want to hooked up with her. Now that I know her, I definitely wouldn't have. Because, no, I'm not, by the way, I'm not shitting on Hannah, but she t- shares a lot about herself yeah. in spin class. She's like, all right, this song was really big when I was 13. Braces on, big pigtails. And you're like, ugh. <laughs> sexier, Hannah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jumping on the bed in my in my yellow. <laughs> like she's. Right. Yeah, like, it, like now I know me. her as a human. And right. I, like, but like, you know, when you just see her, obviously she's gorgeous. And by the way, I've only seen her with her hair up now. But you're saying like you would prefer that story to be like a little sexier. No. Like I remember when I was wearing a bikini and I was getting fingered. No, I the... definitely don't want that. I definitely, by the way, I'm panting so hard in those fucking spin classes that all it's all I can do to get through it. But her stories are so like, she's not like, when you saw, when I first saw her, she was like, like beautiful, sexy, walked out and out of the room, right. donuts. How do you not love that? Yeah. And now I see her like hair up and she's, Hey, I got a heart foundation. I, I have a heart foundation. I, you know, for culinary, pulmonary culminisms or whatever. And pulmonary so, culminisms. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> so I, I know her too well. Like, and she, right, right, right. Yeah, now like, it's like, now it's well. like a, like a cousin or something. It's like a friend of yours, right? Uh, like, well, honestly, more like a little sister because yeah. she is so much younger than me. Yeah. You forget, like, I think that's the Do you forget weird thing. how much older you are than someone sometimes? Like oh, when you talk, oh my fucking God. time. The yeah. kids that work at Starbucks, I called them kids today. And I was like, I shouldn't call them kids. I was like, no, I'm like 27 years older than any of them. That's a lot older. It's it's bizarre because, you know, it, this sounds crazy. But when, you know, we'll use Hannah as an example because I'm friends with her. Yeah. But like when I first saw her, you go, oh, yeah. Then she'll play music and she'll be like, okay, this song was big when I was in fourth grade. And I'm like, you're like, I'm like Nirvana. Like, yeah. are you shitting me? Like. This was, Fourth I was in grade. college. Yeah. Like, like, or like she'll say a song and then you forget. That's why I'm always so blown away at dudes who can date younger chicks. I'm like, way younger. Doesn't that creep you the fuck out? Yeah. I, I would be more apt to help Hannah get to the next place where she wants to get in her life. Yeah. As a, like, as a, like an older person mm-hmm. than to try to fuck someone like that. That just, that creeps me out in the weirdest way. And I, I often think, I was How this, young could you go if that you were? That's a great fucking question. Yeah, that is a great. Let's fucking think question. about that for a second. So let's, wait, let's let's think let's about think that. About, I can so tell wait, you, it let, would be below forty nine. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ! So how old are you? I'm forty seven. Leanne's forty nine. Yeah. <laughs> right. So Leanne brings up the fact that she's she. People go, how old are you? She goes fifty. I go, you're forty nine. Don't say fifty. You're not fucking fifty. Yeah. You're forty fucking nine. Because when you say fifty, they think I'm fifty two. Yeah. So say forty nine, and then I'll go forty seven. I'm a lot younger. Yeah, yeah. I do the same thing. Because Christina's older Christina's than me. Christina's like, too. what, 52? She's 56. 56. And, and you're then, yeah. 70. You're 47? I'm 40. Isn't it crazy that people think I'm younger than you? I've never heard that, but. <laughs> Guys, in the comments. Don't don't even. Just don't even, In the comments. Who looks younger? Me or Tom? Thanks, guys. Um. I've been, uh, I'm so used to people thinking I'm older. It's just whatever. You've you know always, what's, you know what's always weird? looked at older, but you, uh, you act older. Well, the other thing is, uh, a, a strange thing is when guys will be, like when guys comment, you know, like I've, I've, I was at a bar after a show and it's, these guys were talking to us. Just like, oh yeah, you're shooting the shit. How you like it here? Blah, blah, blah. And eventually the guy's like, well, I mean, do you remember that? He goes, you're not exactly a you know young guy. And I was like, the fuck are you talking about, man? <laughs> like, how old are you? So wait, have you always felt have you always felt older than everyone you've been around or younger than everyone around? I feel like I was a young guy around a lot of people uh, growing up. You know what I mean? Like I'm I, always, I've always felt like the youngest guy whenever yeah. I hang out with people. Yeah. Like I never, and I remember in like, in like fifth grade, there was this kid, Jay. And he was in like fourth grade. And I kept talking to him about like middle school. And he was like, I got a couple years for that. And I was like, wait, you're younger than me? 
I was talking to a fourth grader, and a he was fourth like, fourth grader, and I was in fifth grade, and I was like, God damn it, Bert, grow the fuck up. I always felt like I was the, especially in stand up too. I felt like I was the kid on every show. Always, I, everyone I emceed and featured for was like twenty years older than me. I feel like I feel like I always feel like me and you are not that far off in age in stand up. Yeah. But then you look at it, and you're like, oh, we're like legit seven years apart in stand up. Nikki Glaser. Amy Schumer, you, Theo, I feel like all of us are, are the same age. But I'm, I'm like, I'm closer to like Burr and Rogan. Yeah. Which I don't feel at all. Like even yeah. remotely. I, part but of you wonder, feel like, I mean, hanging out with you, you also, have, you, you have like, you know, kid-like energy. So it, yeah, it doesn't, I, I, I feel like those guys are m much older than me. Like, yeah. I don't mean like they look old. I just mean like their energy is of like, you know, it's like a dad-like, yeah. like, you know, you're an elder, you know, mature, whatever. And I feel like you, I, you, if I couldn't see you, I would feel like you're 10 years younger. Everyone always says to me, uh, everyone always says I'm, I'm taller than they expected. Oh, that's what I, I love that. Every that's time the I greatest meet somebody, compliment. it is the best compliment the, because everybody thinks I'm five, six. Yeah. So <laughs> I hear that every week when I meet someone, they're like, you're a lot taller than I thought. I'm like, feels good. They always say to me, feels they good. always say to me, uh, you're not as fat as they say you are. Yeah, yeah. That's another and one. And they go, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a fucking joke. Yeah. Kind of. And they're like, wait, where's that cross on fire? And you're like, oh, that's a joke too. <laughs> hey, guys, once again, we're going to have to pump the brakes on this racist thing with my special airs <laughs> because uh, we do have some touch and go segments in there where we could get really lit up. So I've already gotten nervous where they're like, hey, do you want to do the breakfast club? I was like, yeah, don't reach out to them right away. Like, <laughs> let's let the special play out and see if they want to reach out to me. <laughs> Um, the, um, uh, the, the, oh, back to how young would I fuck? Yeah. You're 47. All right. Okay. Let's, 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 let's start, let's, let's start, start backing it up. Let's start, let's start, start, let's, start, let's, start, uh, let's, start yeah. let's start like here. Would you sleep with a 40 year old? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. But that, like that's like regular. Okay. Let's go five at a time. So how about 35 that feels like describe 35 to so me. 35 is describe like, her tell me about her what does she do for a living where is she at in her life like what kind of money does she have what was she looking right. for does she want to get married does she want to have kids because i wouldn't here's the deal here's the deal now this is going to sound fucked up yeah okay pull them up online aubrey plaza she's 35 by the way i'm sure fucking hollywood actresses amy poehler's not 35 no no fucking you got the wrong list. But that, that no offense, Amy. Poehler. That that seems like that seems right on the money. I would think for Aubrey Plaza, you know, she's like established. She's got her own thing going on. She knows what she wants to do. No, she knows I'm not looking she for is. that. I don't want. Anyone. I know. That's yeah. why it's, like, it's kind don't of like don't want that. Now here's the thing. If I if I if I'm thinking about starting a second family, 35 is too old. Not only that, this is going to be a lot harder to manipulate a 35 year old. You know, they 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 have their more sense to them. Especially if it's Aubrey Plaza. Oh, she's definitely she'll run circles around you. So, you need okay. Let's just say no right away. Get, get Aubrey Plaza off the screen, okay? So, but like here. she's out of she's out of my league even in real life. Like, so let's say 30. Now, okay. 30 is probably just mature enough where it's not going to make you crazy to talk to. But she's, she's, you know, a 30 year old can, can be like, can have their shit together, has some money, has a job. Has no any money. 30 year old? Not, nothing she's, saved She can up. pay her bills. She can pay her bills. Yeah. She can pay yeah. her bills. She can sure. pay her bills. She probably doesn't have a savings account. She has a savings account, but she's not like got a nest egg. But like what kind of money, what, why, why does this serve a big factor? Do you no, know? Money's not actually a factor of me at all. Okay. Uh, I, but, but I'm, I don't want to take someone and then I thought about this today yeah there was there was a, a girl in spin who was like super beautiful mm -hmm. and i looked at her but she looked like she could be a little bit of a mess do you do that thing where you smell her seat like when no no, no i definitely okay. don't, smell I, I don't i don't know i've never been i'm asking <laughs> no okay and i thought i thought this is a bizarre thought but i thought i, I could and I've had this thought before. I've tried to work it into a bit, but it never came out right. Yeah. If I go, I could blow her mind. Like I could take her from where she's at and then immediately put her into a lifestyle where she would be like, oh my God, like what the fuck happened? Like, mm -hmm. and, and by the way, I can't do that with Leanne. Leanne, I can't impress her. Like right. if I go, hey, it's your 50th. I want to buy you a Porsche. She goes, no. And I go, why not? She goes, because I don't want it. And I'm like, why? And she goes, too much money. Why don't we just put that? Don't no. But put it in savings. Well, for the girls' college. And I'm like, stop. Like, I want, let's get Let a private me have some jet. Fun. Let, yeah. yeah, I said let's let's go skiing. We have three days off. Let's go skiing. 
well, I will take a private jet to Utah. And she goes, oh, fucking no way. I'm already out. I'm already out. Can I tell you, though, what your big mistake is? Cause By you, asking. Yeah. You've, you've, you re- said you've, you, re- you've repeated this a few you, times. You, I, I bought Leanne her very last present ever uh, of, on Valentine's Day. She will never get a present for me ever again in her entire life. This, this most this recent Valentine's Val- Day. Can you tell I us what happened? Yeah, 100, 100 fucking percent. And then we'll talk about fucking 30-year-olds. Go. Huh. So Leanne... Um, it starts with the fact that I tried to buy Leanne jewelry once. Now, Leanne is extremely difficult to shop for. Whether or not that is the fact that no one bought her presents when she was growing up or that the presents she got as a child were always underwhelming or she wasn't allowed to show gratefulness for whatever fucked up reason her family might have had, mm-hmm. I don't know what that is, but she's always been tough to buy her presents. When I first, first time I ever bought her anything, I bought her a silver bracelet and her words instead of thank you was, silver washes me out. And I went, Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, so just gold? And she was like, yeah, gold, and that's all you can buy me. So I bought gold, and she'd be like, oh, no, I like it. Thanks. That's the way Leanne receives a present. So Valentine's Day comes up. She says, I want nothing. And I said, okay. Now, I knew that she had said in passing, I really love wearing a neat tracksuit. Like, they're really fun. I really wish that someone over Christmas had bought me a... um, I forget the name of the fucking tracksuit. It's like a really high-end tracksuit, mm-hmm. and they're based out of Venice. There's one at the mall on Riverside, but they're based out of Venice. Wish I knew the fucking name of them. And um, I said to Leanne, I said, okay, I'll buy her nothing. Now, this is my only day home, right? I go to Hot Spin, and I know that I need to be back at 3 o'clock to pick up Isla at school. It's like 11 o'clock. I get in the car, and I drive in two hours traffic. I think I saw the photos of this, right? Did I see a photo? Okay. You drive- Aviator Nation. Aviator. Yeah, they're great. They're great. Yeah. They're amazing. They make um, great jackets. And- um, Aviator Nation is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. A little expensive. Yeah. A little exp- Really expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. But not super expensive. They're just really comfortable. Their sweats are comfortable. Their, their jackets are comfortable. Everything about them is fucking awesome. The girls love them. Christina is obsessed with Dude, Aviator Nation. I bought the yeah. girls AVA- all matching AD- Aviator Nation tracksuits like a year ago for a vacation when we went to Bali and they all wore them and they all loved them and they took pictures in them, right? Yeah. So I say, she says, both the girls got Aviator Nation tracksuits for Christmas Mm -hmm. and she was like, I'd always wish someone had bought me one. I wish someone had bought me one. She has said that a couple times, right? Now I heard that, like you, you are really good at buying push presents. You always have been. You just get them. You bring them to her. She loves them. Yeah. I get in traffic. I drive from my house to Venice, which at the time was an hour and a half down to Venice. I find parking in fucking Venice off Abbot Kinney. Took forever. I go in to, well, I go to MedMen first and then I go to Aviator Nation and I say, what color velour tracksuits do you have? Velour is a little nicer, right? Mm-hmm. A lot more comfy. They said, well, we've got gray. I said, no, don't buy gray. Gray washes are out. I'm not getting gray. Yep. She said, gray, we've got green. I said, she won't like green, but you know what? Now I'm going, fuck it, I'm buying the girls tracksuits. You know what? Georgia would look great in green. Mm-hmm. And then we've got uh, black. And I was like, Isla would like black, but she would hate a matching tracksuit. So I miss, mix and match for Isla, mm-hmm. right? And then I go, what else do you have? And they said, we have a gold tracksuit. And I went, like, bam. Bam. Gold's her color. Yeah, yeah. Silver washes are out. Gold's her color. I buy the gold. I buy the green. I buy the black pants with an oversized red hoodie for Isla that isn't zip up. It's a pullover all velour. I then buy Isla extra large pants because she steals my pants. I thought about this fucking present. You nailed I it. I thought about it and then I paid for it. Was not cheap. No. Got back in traffic at the worst time to be in traffic because I would argue three o'clock worse than fucking five o'clock these yeah. days. Yeah, terrible. Drive all the way home. I've spent five hours getting this present. I bring them home. Leanne's there and I go, can I just show you your present? She goes, you got me a present? And I go, yeah. And I pull them all out. She goes, oh, please say it's not green or gold. And I went, well, it's gold. She goes, oh, no, no. Why would you get me gold? Gold washes me out. I went, hold on. And I lost my shit. Tom, I lost my shit. I said, this is the last present you'll ever get from me. And I said, there's no thank you. There's no like, hey, you just drove out of Venice? She goes, why would you drive to Venice? And I went, hold on, hold on. Stop all of that. Why would you? And I got so upset. And I was like, by the way, no one got me anything. Of course. Like, no one yeah. got me anything. Yeah, you're And dead. I'm sitting here. Yeah. Georgia comes in. She goes, oh, my God. I love this tracksuit. I look at the end. I go, that's how you do when you get yeah. a present. That's what yeah. you're supposed to say. Isla comes in. Hold on, secret, secret time. Yeah. Georgia comes in and says, Mom says to me directly, Mom says I'm gonna hate your present. And I went, 
Did you just get in her head before? What? By the way, Leanne will see this and hate that I'm sharing this. Hate that I'm sharing why, this. Why would she assume that Georgia wouldn't like the president? I do not know. I think she was, I think, in all fairness, I think Leanne had said to Georgia, listen, dad's very sensitive about, about these presents. And he's re so he really you, misfired on you, this one. Yeah, and he really misfired. So if you hate it, just don't let him know that you hate it. And then Georgia was like, I loved it. She's like, why would mom think I wouldn't like that? And I went, wait, what? Isla comes home, looks at the pants and goes, what size are they? I said, extra large. Lights up. <laughs> she slept in them. Isla slept in them for three days. She wore them everywhere she went. They were the coolest. Pull up, pull up a picture of us on our tracksuits. It's on my fucking Instagram. So then Leanne puts on this, the gold tracksuit. Georgia puts on green. Isla puts on hers. We go to our friend's house and they're like, God damn, I love your tracksuit, Leanne. Right there. Yeah. This is all, and by the way, she looks awesome she in looks the gold. Great. She, she looks, looks awesome. Great. And now she loves it. But I go, I go, get, look, your wife just said, looks, looks great. Look, your wife, the first fucking person yeah. looks great. Yeah, it does look great though. They look great. She looks really happy in the photo. I, I, I think that's actually a fake smile. Oh. <laughs> like, look, but look. And Isla, does Georgia love her? She Georgia loves hers. hers. Isla will not take hers off because it's an extra large pullover velour hoodie, extra large black it's awesome. pants. It's awesome. Isla's like, thanks. I'm so glad they didn't match. And I said to Leanne, I said, it's the last present you ever get from me. And what'd she say to that? Oh, Fine. come on. You know I'll buy her another present. Of course you will. But but it's like. You got to gotta start ignoring Cut back to the girl and spin. Yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah. You sniffed her seat. She's beautiful. If this is my this is my point about wives. Oh right, because you could blow this girl's mind. That's I could what you're blow saying. if I if 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 any chick heard any woman any woman in L.A. heard you drove from the valley to fucking Venice. I know. In the middle of the day, sopping wet. Just what? Yeah. They'd be like, for me. Yep. That's what they would say for me. But a wife and hears also, that different and goes, hold on, why would you do that? We have pickup at three. You were going to be late for pickup. You're like, that's not the point. It's Valentine's Day and, and I want you to feel special. But also think about how like that girl from spin class, like she, has, she hasn't been like eaten out with like uh, you have a toy in her ass. You know okay, what I mean? I'm, like, I'm not bringing that funder. That's yeah. not going to happen. She also hasn't been eaten out after I had hot wings and had that inside her <laughs> vagina. And that's where a wife comes in pretty handy. <laughs> They're like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck's wrong with you? So I wait, still love you. What are you going to do for a 50th? I think you got to do a surprise. You got to do a surprise. Oh, no, no, there's no fucking way I would ever do a surprise. No. There's no fucking way Here's what you I do. would do a surprise and then watch all our friends see her go, why did you do this? Surprise trip. That's what you got to do. Surprise trip? Yep. You got to buy the tickets, book it all, and just be like, here's your passport. Here we go. Leanne is so penny conscious that she would, it would, for her, it would mean more if, if I, if I didn't do any, like, it's, it's like. Do this, it's do just, this. It's, buy I, it. I, I said, I said, surprise trip. I said, I'll take everyone to Hawaii. Yeah. I'll take everyone. Let's do a, a big, big, big trip. Like a real, let's all go to Vegas. Let's something cheaper where it, you can get everyone. Well, I'll get a party bus. I'll get the tour bus. You should she, buy the flights. Pay for the hotel, have it all lined up, just be like, oh, here's a card, and have it all in the card. And then when she's like, how much does this cost? Be like, it's not coming out of your fucking pocket, so don't worry about it. And then just go it, to the airport. She doesn't hear that. It is she sees it as definitely coming out of her pocket. No, I know. She, okay. That's a her I'm brain. Just, first her of brain all, goes. I, I that went, is a, definitely my uh, pocket. Uh, don't repeat. By the way, Leanne what has, I said. Leanne, I wasn't like really. Leanne, yeah, yeah. Tom said you're not paying for any of this. <laughs> Tom said you don't really make any money. Tom said. Tom said I wear the big pants. I got the big dick. I got the big pockets. I decide where we're going. That's what Tom said. Oh, good, cool. I'll be welcome at your house thanks fuck dude i i leanne you know oh, by the way I, I, leanne is going to hate this podcast. don't she watch this uh yeah she probably will watch this i guess she had so much fun today with push oh do you know what she asked what? for the call and sick to work show that we're doing yeah that i uh, have not announced yet um <laughs> <laughs> that's all right there's no details there's no details we're doing live podcasts in one room yeah and she was like oh my gosh Maybe we could do a so over October. And I was like, you're not going to get pushed. She's got a busy day. Oh, she was yeah. like, she was like, would, should you ask her? And I was like, I would love for her and Leanne to do a live podcast and watch Leanne get fucking just deer in headlights in front of fucking 400 people. Like, <laughs> <laughs> she would not be. I think she would not be thrown. Dude, I think Leanne's live kind podcasts, of. No, live podcasts are very different. I know. I've done them. I, I can't do them. Well, I think you'll, your instinct would probably be what most comics' instincts become 
at the live podcast, which is you start performing to the crowd. Yeah. But it's not as good of a podcast. It, and you end up making the audience laugh, but the podcast sort of like we had, we used to do the live your mom's house shows all the time. And the thing that we learned was that um, doing that, like facing each other would help the podcast. If you wanted to really, it was, it was like staying connected, like keep talking to each other yeah. because what happened is if you're doing the live podcast, you tend to start, you know, facing the crowd. You guys know what I mean, and, right? Dude, and then you end up, you're, you're basically doing crowd work, which is fun in Maybe the Maybe Liam would be better than me because she doesn't even know how to play to an audience. Maybe. She would just be in the moment. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's the trick of it is to, because it makes sense to try to make some jokes to the crowd, but like if you end up just performing to the live audience, you, your podcast is just you doing crowd work. Here's an honest question. How are you supposed to know what to do with your money? Very few of us are exposed to meaningful advice on how to manage our finances. Even fewer have the means to get professional financial guidance. Betterment is a platform that was built to do something radical. Give accessible financial advice that puts you first. If you're like most Americans, your money is probably sitting in a savings account, likely earning you next to nothing. Maybe you have an investment account that you're not really sure what to do with. Betterment can help you make sense of what to do with your money. Investing involves risk, but you don't have to know the ins and outs of the stock market to start saving more or start investing for your future. Betterment's technology would put your money to work, choosing the stocks and strategies that are right for you, because we know you have other things to do. Betterment's platform can even provide guidance on what financial goals make sense for you. Give your money a new home with Betterment. It, peace of mind included. Download the Betterment app today. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-M-E-N-T -E -E for the betterment of you. I have uh, tour dates to announce April 1st, and I was like trying to think. When, what, what dates, what area will you, will you be announcing? The I'm saying time of the year. You'll be announcing the fall then? Fall, yeah. Okay. We, we did, We just to be clear, me and Tom's agents looked at our calendars to make sure we're not going to San Jose this week and then I'm there next week. That, was that so will not happen again, everybody. Dumb. <laughs> there were so many people like, asshole, I just bought tickets for Tom. I know. I, I will not see you. I'll see you in two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so, should spread it out. Yeah. And then and then, uh, and then we got, we, we're doing something together, but we got it. I would love to do something. What? You want a surprise, you said? Yeah. Like that kind of surprise? What? Stanley Cup showing up. Is that what you mean? I like, yeah, we should do a surprise for a live event. For like, if we, if we were to do a podcast that we haven't announced yet, yeah, we should do a, a surprise, a good surprise. Okay, we can discuss that. I mean, it's going to be... Let's each bring each other surprises. It's going to be wild, the uh, the live podcast. Yeah. It's gonna Shit, be I wish we could tell. Yeah, we, I can, when are we supposed to announce it? I don't know. They, they would definitely let us know. How about this? Hey, guys. We're going to be a part of the Netflix festival. We We're are doing a live podcast at the Wiltern here in Los Angeles. Yes. And so if you want your tickets, check out our socials, our socials. <laughs> I'm on Instagram and Twitter. So is Tom. Yep. And we will post there because we don't have the information as the time of this recording. But the show is this year and it's, it's at the Wiltern. <laughs> it's in, in April. Angeles. It's in April. It's part of the Netflix comedy festival. And that's all the information we have. We hope you come to the live taping of our show of, of April, two bears, okay. <laughs> April, and then he'll be shirtless and I'll wear a suit. Yep. And we'll have surprises for each other. Yep. And if you want to take pictures with us, I probably will. And he won't. <laughs> <laughs> we should get a big cutout of you yep. and I'll stand next to your cutout. That's hilarious. And people can take a picture of me, you and your cutout. <laughs> That's great. We should do it. By the way, my meet and greets will be skinnying up while this coronavirus hits the United States of America. I will how many, be, do, you, hold how up. many do you normally meet after a show now? Uh, maybe 500. Where? Uh, at a bar. Evansville. We just went to a bar. and it got, Wait, how, how did you know which bar to go to? And how did, I, just, I just go. I get done the show, and then I put it on my Instagram stories at the end. We pick a bar that's kind so you of, don't announce it from stage. I don't announce it from stage. Okay. I put it on my Instagram stories. I want people that really, really want to meet me. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to just be like, hey, because everyone want to go, let's just go there and get a beer. And then that, You ever do the um, the post show? Someone's like, eh, I'll take a picture. And you're like, I'm not no, trying to. No. <laughs> By the way, oh, oh I, that or uh, the one I get all the time. I know you love this, Bert. Come on, get over here. We'll get a picture. Oh, yeah. The best is I went to an XFL game with Burr, and anyone, anytime someone goes, I don't want to be that guy, and he goes, you already are, so stop. If you don't want to be that guy, then walk away. <laughs> Hilarious. Like, By the way, he was <laughs> aggressively annoyed with, 
with being with me in a public place. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, he goes, you're matching their energy. Stop matching their energy. Yeah. They get excited. Then you get more excited that they met you. Stop. Just say yeah. yes. <laughs> he has no, he has no tolerance. He's for been it. doing that. He's been doing that for fucking, I mean, I don't know how long he's been famous, like 15 years. Something for me, like it's that. been four. Yeah. Or not even four, really just kind of two. Yeah. And no, but man, been, he, yeah. yeah. So a 30 year old, you would fuck a 30 year old. Um, what about, okay. I, I'm, I'd be more apt for 32. Wait, why? I thought you were going to go the other direction. No, 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 no. I want to go older. I always want to go older. I, I like women aging better than, I don't know, I've never been, I, I've never been into like young, ch even when I was young, I always felt like there was something not really developed about like girls. So would you hook up with a 19 year old? No, no, not even a chance. No fucking slim chance to none. Really? Not even remotely. That's only about 30 years younger. What's the turnoff? Uh, I don't want to talk to her. <laughs> of course. Not. I have nothing to say to her. I feel like any of my ideas, if she likes them, I'm going to hate them. Yeah. Like I go, I have an idea about a joke where I talk about technology and dating. And she's like, I love it. And and I'm like, like, of course uh, you do. Because you're a child. Yeah. Okay. So 32. 32 is, 32 is my limit. If I was going to remarry, she'd be 32. God, that's still too fucking young. Because then here I am 70 and yeah. she's 50 slamming fucking young dick. Yeah. 32. I'm going to, I'll tell you what I, I'm going to, I'm going to marry a 37 year old widow. You, she has to be widowed. Yeah. With kids. Wait, so wait. I can come in, slide in. I don't have to do the damp, pampers and stuff, but they're like four and six. Oh, okay. And boys. And then I'm like, ha ha. I've always wanted boys. <laughs> and then yeah. 37 year old widow. And do you care how the husband died? Um, I don't want it to be a heart attack. Cause I don't want her, uh, brow beating me about the way I eat. And That's can't be true. liver failure. It's gotta be like something. Can't be a surprise accident. Hang time, gliding or something like no, that? No, because anytime yeah. he leaves the house, she's like, oh, babe, make sure to wear your seatbelt. And you're like, I'm not him, okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would want him to be Got attacked shot. brutally. Yeah, attacked yeah. brutally by a gang of young thugs. Yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. can always say off-color things. It's just like, yeah, fuck him, right? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. So. <laughs> Goddamn Vietnamese gangs. Yep. <laughs> the I Hmong think, are just taking over. You mean those, uh, those Irish gangs <laughs> always acting up. <laughs> the, the fucking Southies. <laughs> no one ever means that. I remember watching an episode of Real Sports one time. You ever watch Real Sports? Yeah, it, on by the way, yes. And it sucks lately. I it watched sucks. It lately. So fucking bad. Why? If you're a producer at Real Sports, step up your fucking game. What happened? Does everything have to be about CTE or Tommy John surgery or or uh, women soccer players in Afghanistan? Fucking tell me a good story. It's like everything's got to be a heartfelt fucking narrative on society. It can't just be like, dude, this guy was a this fucking... This kid's loser. 11 and can dunk. Yeah. yeah. Like, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? Yeah. I'm so tired of real sports. I'm so tired of it. Even their year wraparound was boring as fuck. It's always disease. It's no, always this kid like... has two, no legs and his brother pushes him in a wheelchair. That's yeah. a great story, but it's not super uplifting when you're on the treadmill. You're like, God damn it, man. I feel like depressed. Of course. CTE. I, I'm tired of CTE they stories. They make you cry yeah, so much. I can't watch football because of the goddamn CTE stories on fucking... We get it, man. They get it too. They know they're getting it. We know they're getting it. Yeah. Leave it. Leave it. Let them be dumb. Let them. That's not what I was going to say. Oh. But, <laughs> but like, yeah, real sports has, I, in my opinion, dropped the fucking ball. Like there was, I'm, there was a, there was an episode where, you know, like they'll, they'll, they'll show the piece and then they go back to the studio and Bryant Gumbel was with whoever did the piece. It was like an old white guy. And then Bryant Gumbel just cuts him off of the knees. He's like, you yeah. sat with him. He seemed like a rapist to me. Why did yeah. you bring that up? And he's like, I don't know. I, was <laughs> I just want to keep this job, man. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Maybe you're <laughs> fucking killing everyone around here, Brian, and you're really difficult to work with, and you don't let us put the fucking mic on the way you should put a fucking mic. Brian Gumble, he will not allow them to mic him the way everyone else gets mic'd. Everyone else gets a fucking mic on your lapel or your tire inside yeah. your shirt. And him? He just gets it on his fucking jacket. Giant fucking, no one cares. You know what? I actually care. It bothers actually, you. As a guy who's Do you see the cord? Do you see the cord? You see the cord every time you see the cord on him. Yeah. We'll go to real sports. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just saw it on one episode. I'm really sorry, Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was a little hot. And I was fucking, you know? Well, these are also promo shots. So this was done for yeah, yeah, photography. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, you see that old white guy right there? I love him. Yeah, I yeah. love him. It was with him. It was with him. So what happened was he said something about thugs. 
Like we were, you were talking about like, you know, all these thugs. Yeah. And he goes, you know, some thugs, like, you know, the, like these bloods and these crips. And Brian was like, ho, 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 ho. What, why they got to be bloods and crips? And he's like, what? And he goes, what, well, how about they were Italian and Irish? And he was like, Bernie is his he's name. Like, Bernie's yeah, Bernie. his name. And he was like, no one means that. <laughs> hey, Brian, why don't we do this? Why don't we just cut this out altogether and I'll stick it from the top? Yeah. Bernie is fucking awesome. He's by the way, great. Andrea, Andrea on Kramer. the, on the Andrea Kramer. Yeah. And by the way, I don't mean to sound like, I don't mean to, I, cause she did a very poignant piece about how beauty and sports kind of, uh, mashes up and you watch these women get aged out of sports because they just want hot chicks telling them the stats or, or interviewing the players. Oh, like the sideline. Andrea people. Kramer yeah. did a great fucking piece on this, man. Andrea Kramer last week on Real Sports. Yeah, her legs looked fucking astounding. That's why. I that's think, and by the that's way, why that's I think when I'm attracted to older women. That's listen. This is what she would want to hear. I'm sure Andrea Kramer. She's said, like, you know, I do my work. I'm but sure Andrea what? Kramer here wants to hear this statement. I'll say it for you, Tom. Yes, yes. I don't know what the piece she was doing was. Yes. <laughs> so here's a better question. Yeah. Twenty-two year old girl. No. Oh. What age would you find acceptable? Or disgusting if you passed away and you were a ghost and you're in your house yeah. and push start got remarried. Oh. Um that's the thing is she's she seemed like she's so sensible and uh I like I already know that she would want somebody in a she, like she would want someone in a respectable age range, you know? She can't tolerate a conversation with somebody oh, yeah. young. So like, you know, I, I could you see think it, she'd go older? Um, it's possible. I mean, she could go like, like real dirty spick. Like, I feel like, I feel like I'm like entry level spick stuff for her. You're high and, end. You're, and you're, you're, uh, you're a crusader. I feel like she might go for like a, a real dirty Rican who's like, <laughs> like the thick gold chains on the beach, you know? And, uh, he could be, I think she would go down. I don't think she would go that much younger than me. I really don't. I think she would be like. She would probably go someone in her range. And I think she'd probably be more comfortable with somebody even older than her. Okay. Then yeah. then what about you? Push, passes away, tragedy. Oh, rest in peace. What's the question? <laughs> how how young would you go? Like how what's what's acceptable young? Let's I think, start let's start at nineteen. Uh, that's way too young. Okay, yeah. 19. Because they got here's the thing. It totally changed. They gotta be around my kids all the time. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So okay. They, yeah. So no kids, nineteen is cool. Yeah. Fuck it. It's like the Vietnam War. No, yeah. no, 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 19. 19, 19 is fine. Yeah, no kids. My kids are in college. Maybe that's a different question. That's a different question. My kids but are for out me, of the house. The person who's like, if they're going to be like, re like, like be with me, they're going to be raising kids. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. got it. Like, that's the thing. She's already going to have to be over 30 to be like, around raising the kids. Yeah. She's going to have to be. So you're lucky. You can get 30 seems like closer to your age. I mean, I feel like I could probably deal with like a third, like, you know, kind of what you were saying, 32, 33, like around there. What color hair? Mo most likely Do you I go could, blonde and keep it blonde? Yeah, I'd be like, kind of looks like your mom, you know? Like, does it feel right? <laughs> you guys don't have that hard of a time calling her mom. That's look, why they kind of look at her and they're like, like, mom? This. And I'm like, yeah, he's calling her mom. Go like this, go like this. Done it, done it a little bit? Kind of feels like mom? Yeah, I'd go. You're cool with me keeping the pictures up a push. It's blonde hair. I think, I could, I think realistically, she'd probably have to be 35, you know, kind of yeah. somewhat mature. She's gonna. I mean, you know, give her some of her bras. Be like, oh, just put it on. Does she? Do you? How, does she work? No, no. Yeah, it, mm, of course not. Hey, I'm so sorry. I know you had dreams, but you then just got folded into mine, and mine take charge of yours. So yeah, I hope you're I'd be cool like, with. check out the house, seal your shit. Everything's paid for. Have you tried hot spin? Have you <laughs> yeah, like, what's up with your breakfast shakes? They're a little heavy. Um, <laughs> Let's get some more H2O. Hey, have you seen the movie? Have you seen the movie um, Bombshell? Which one's that? It's about Roger Ailes and... No, uh, I heard it's great, though. Is it good? Oh, it's fucking awesome. Is that the one with Russell Crowe playing? Or is that the no, series? No, no, no. Oh, that that's might the, be the series. That's the series about oh, that. Oh, that, that's... The Showtime the, series. Oh, I bet the Showtime series is even fucking It's better. probably more in-depth, even, because they could, you know, really get into the... Makes me want to fucking really Bombshell, watch... Bombshell, is that Charlize Theron? Charlize Theron plays Megyn Kelly. Yeah. And then the other girl plays the girl that no one really... Charlize Gretchen Carlson. Charlize Theron's so hot. So hot. Fuck. I mean... How old is she? How old is Charlie Theron? See, the problem with like Sorry, older women. I think you're supposed to say like Charlie's Theron. Are she's you being South serious? African. Yeah, yeah. Everyone says it. 44? Yeah, but she's got that fucking, those Afrikaans jeans. 
44? Yeah. Look at that. She is Dutch. I mean, Dutch built goddess. That is that is colonial settler genes. She'd be such a good dom, right? Well, you don't understand. Open oh your mouth. God. I'm going to pee in your toilet now. Your mouth toilet. She comes from uh, the genes uh, where they had to survive a boat ride. Look at her. Right? Fucking A, man. Then moved to a inhospitable land where you couldn't have cows or goats because you had big cats. So you had to live off the land. You were They were the only white people. In, that's her genes settled South Africa. Do you realize mm. what kind of savage genes you have to be able to fucking be Dutch and go there and survive? Oh, my God. Yeah. Did you see her in that movie with Seth Seth uh, Rogen? Uh uh-uh. uh Where they fucking made out? It's awesome. Really? It makes her feel like she's gettable. Well, right. And oh. you know, and she's not. That's she's the nice. That's the nice, that's Who's the nice she thing about Who's her. Who's she dating? Um, boyfriend. Let's set this up right now. Let's tweet it out, Charlize, and we'll just get all our fans to retweet it. If you had to marry one widow, who would it be, Bert or Tom? And then we'll put our net worth there next to it. Oh, I bet her net worth just destroys us. Oh, yeah, of course. You think? Of course. She's been single. Who's her boyfriend? No. no. Uh, Jesus Christ, Nadav. No. Dude, come on. That's Brad a year Pitt. ago, and it's not true. Who is Bra- Charlize Theron married to? Um, Who's her partner? God. Dating. Okay. Go back there. Yeah. Star dating actor Sean Penn. Oh, that's that's a long time ago. All right. Wow, man, but she's got some Hollywood miles on her. If she dated Sean Penn and Brad Pitt, I don't think she dated Brad Pitt. I think that's just, oh really? I think that's just internet. Okay. Hmm. Imagine the miles on his dick. So Charlize Theron says to you first date. She says, um, "I really like you. You're not gonna make me get like a AIDS test or anything, are you?" <laughs> I'm like, nah, no. I'm good. I mean, I know you brought it up. Now it's super awkward. Now I feel like I definitely should, but I'm not. Going I to. definitely would not. I would actually. I could see like open blisters, and I'd be like, "What's that?" And if, if she, she was said, like, if oh, "I had Theron, on the wrong sunblock," I'd if Charlize right. Theron said, "I have herpes," here's the deal: I have them. I can't really tell when I get outbreaks, but I, I'm also allergic to latex. Do you still want to date me? Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. And she'd be like, "I know that like other guys have said it's really painful." Uh, like the day after they sleep with me, just so you know, like you might be in a lot of pain. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Hey, listen, uh, I don't really. Um, You're probably gonna bleed cool kids from your asshole, and I would like you to send them to boarding school. I'd be like, they're already going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my, what kids? What kids? You mean the ones, mine? the ones that I put in boarding school yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. cool. Yeah, sure. Hey, listen, I need you to get rid of all the pictures of your. Ex-wife. Now, see, here's the interesting <laughs> thing. She's 44. Uh, no kids with her. It's yeah. just you and her. Wait, did she just have kids? She's adopted. No, no, no. I think she just had kids. I thought she adopted a kid. No? I thought my child was a boy. It's a girl. What? Oh, how trans. Did, how did she adopted a... What? Just go to her actual wiki. She has an adopted child. That's what I'm... Tr- that's what I'm you suggesting. Could, oh, you weren't joking. She has a... Oh, she has a... I thought you were just making a... No. She has a trans adopted child? Yeah, I think so. Go to personal life. What is this, your first time on fucking Wikipedia? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Relationships roll down. She dated the guy from Third Eye Blind. All right, Stephen Jenkins, the album. All right, da-da-da. She brought Stuart Townsend on the set of a movie. I got to book a movie with her. The couple lives in L.A. <laughs> then she dated Sean Penn. Health like concerns. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Jesus Christ, go to adopted child. She didn't have an adopted child. Yes, she does. I'm telling you. W- would put that in their personal life. I don't know. Why isn't it there? She adopted children. See? She, she adopted she seven children? You know that her seven, seven-year-old seven child... God, you can't read. Your seven-year-old child, Jackson, is transgender girl. Okay. She got one kid? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that good. You know what that means? What? I keep my kids. My kids don't have to boarding school anymore. Because she has a kid. Yeah. And yeah. I got girls. She's got a girl. Yeah. We're good. There you go. How fucking great is this? You just need your wife to pass away. I know. <laughs> Hey, Leanne, have you thought about doing uh, cage fighting? <laughs> I wonder if Leanne and Push could do this with men, what they do. I'd be dying to hear that. Yeah, they would They would do that. Yeah, you know what they did? They talked about raising teenagers today. Yeah. 
I bet they 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 might have like a fun time having the train run on them like an, after an NBA game. You know what I mean? Like imagine like you go to a Clippers game, like whatever, and then you're in the locker like they're in the locker room afterwards and all the guys line up and you just drill them. Like the Wu-Tang Clan story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you like what do you, do you think Leanne could in a fantasy world entertain that or no? <laughs> Three guys in, and she hasn't even gotten to you, God. She's like, oh, <laughs> "Yeah, I don't uh, want to do this anymore." You, God? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, remember when I it? told that story? So, by the way, that story's in my special now. I, I are I, you serious? I, yeah, are yeah. you fucking serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that story's in my new special. Oh but, God! But when I told it to you and Burr, I what I remember the most is uh, Burr being like, "This is the most emotion he's shown like about <laughs> me because I was <laughs> so excited to tell it." <laughs> This is the most emotion he's shown. Yeah. I'm going to drive back for a podcast. What time okay. is our podcast? Is it 5.30 or 5? You said 5.30. Did I say 5.30? Yeah. Hold on one second. What's today's date? By the way, your agent never got back to you. Just no, he's texting me twice saying he loves me and he thinks on the <laughs> podcast. is at 5.30. Okay. Um, he texted you that? I love wait, you. Who's your, who, does your agent, who does your agent represent besides you? Um, who do you think your agent likes the most? On a personal level or their comedy? I would, that's like, to totally, that's, I would like to hear both. Because like Nick, for instance, your agent has for sure a Ali favorite. Wong. Ali Wong has got to be his favorite. Well, no, I'm saying a favorite personality to talk to, a person. That's probably me. And then has a favorite comedian. Not not no, not who's no. the best for his business. No. Fa- like who who makes him laugh oh, the most. Wow. And then who's the best for his business. I bet I bet I bet his favorite comedian mm-hmm. is Jim Jeffries. As as stand up, yeah, uh-huh. I bet, I bet his favorite client mm-hmm. is without a doubt Ali Wong, or maybe no, he represents Sebastian. Those are two pretty cool. So I'm not. I'm, let's just say I'm not even in that list. I think I'm his favorite to hang out with. I believe that. I would think you're every agent's favorite to hang out with. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, wait. Who's You're the your, fun who, guy. Who, I don't even know who my 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 agent. I don't really know that. either. I don't really know. I, I really don't. You Berk, It's it's it. You and are you with Berkowitz or Andrew Russell? Andrew. Okay. He's got. He's got Dalia. Yeah. So that, that that I know. Is Andrew Russell single? He's a girlfriend. Like how serious? Yeah, they they're they're pretty serious. Okay, then. But I bet before it was Dalia. He's like, I'll go to Dalia. So I'll swing by Chicago. Oh, yeah. Clean up on what the fucking riffraff that's hanging out after the show. Yeah. You know, I, I've been to I've been to venues a week, two weeks, a month after Dalia, and Dude. when I'll go there, there will like people who work the venue Those will be beautiful like beautiful girls in the world. Well, they'll be like, I didn't know there was any good looking women in this town, and then Dalia came here and did a show. And yeah. He's like, they fucking put their new faces by the way, on. By the way, he doesn't even fuck them. No. Well, they're just all out to see him. He just does stand up for them. Yeah, they're all out to see him. That's like me. That's like Burt going, no, all these big guys were here, took their shirts off, and Burt just left. No, yeah. I drink with them. <laughs> I no. fuck them. No, they, all, they they love going out for Chris. Yeah, d- who, who else? He's got Dalia, you. I don't know who else. I really don't. Really? I really don't know who else he has. I don't. I know Chris just because we, we're friends and, you know, we'll talk about stuff, but I don't know who else. That's crazy. I mean, they, they have a bunch of, you know, a bunch of big Ali things. Wong blows me away. Yeah, yeah, and I wish I knew her better because she is every she's she can talk to you like sit down and talk to you and and immediately catch up like your old friends. Yeah, without really even knowing her that well, she just is like really cool. Like she takes what she does. She, this is my, maybe the wrong thing to say, but the, what I'm trying to say with dudes sometimes you don't have to know someone very well and you as comics and because there's nothing there you just see them at an airport bar and you start talking yeah yeah sometimes with female comics especially single female comics yeah there is like this weird like every fucking comics tried to fuck me yeah. Allie's like a dude comic she just said something like hey how are the kids how the fucking da 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 hey i noticed you do this i wonder why you do this like it's really an interesting hang i, I really enjoy she's her. a fun hang uh yeah and <laughs> Allie's super modest too like she'll be like yeah. Oh yeah, you're doing like she'll be like bring up like you're doing great. I'm like, hold on, <laughs> you did fifty thousand tickets the in d- San Francisco. <laughs> I, I, well, I, what she's doing is so so many people are so mind blowing to me. And that yeah. when we started, how many comics were doing theaters, not arenas? Yeah, theaters when we started. Yeah, I know. Brian Regan. Yeah, Cosby. <laughs> Yeah, Cosby. Yeah, Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Yeah. It was that was it. Chris and Rock. Now, now all of a sudden, it's like, it's like 
So many comics from theaters. So many comics from big theaters. Dude, we have uh, how, what? Let's ballpark it. Ten arena acts in doing comedy. I guess. Ali, Joe Coy, Fluffy, Joe, Chappelle, Bill Burr, Sebastian. I mean, it, it, that, by the way, that's just me running through them. Yeah, yeah. You forgetting like, you know, Larry the Cable, Rodney Carrington, like. Big acts. So fucking so insane. Oh, Franco Escamilla, the Mexican comedian. Yeah. You know, do you know how big he is, dude? So he he is like the the biggest act by a mile yeah. in Latin America. When he comes here, he lives here now. But when he plays the states, he does, he did the the what the Honda Center in OC. He does he does arenas here. Jesus. I mean, he's he's a legit multi-country arena act. So you know. Uh... Like at first I was joking around. I was like, Tom's doing Spanish. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just do like a really solid British accent <laughs> and do my act in a British accent. Yes. And see if it would like translate. Yeah. And then we got the new house and we were talking. Leanne was talking to our neighbor. Yeah. Our neighbor's Russian mm -hmm. and the builder's Russian. And she said, she's, what's that for? That was supposed to be for the Stanley Cup. Oh, Corbell. But they were like, uh, no, you can't drink. Mike, Mike shut that down. I would have drank a beer. Yeah. We should have drank it chocolate milk out of it. We could have like, one of us could have pinned him down and the other one could have drank, but then I feel like the police would have been here after that. We should, if we could, we should have been like, can we take one picture where one of us is holding us and the other one's got his dick in the cup? I think Mike would have shut that down too. He's like, no, 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 just, no, no. What if we held you a little bit? Um, wait, what was I going to say? You oh, said. Oh, oh. So our, so our um, this is like my pipe dream. Okay. Yeah. This is like, you know, your retirement is start doing South African tours. Or South American tours. Yeah. I think that's your, your get out of jail me too card. Uh -huh. You're like, oh yeah, well, I didn't like you guys in the States anyway. <laughs> Como esta? Bienvenidos. <laughs> and so um, I, our neighbor is Russian and his builder is Russian. And Leanne's talking to them and said something to the effect of, um, my husband speaks Russian. And they're like, really? And she goes, well, yeah, he, he's, uh, he lived there for a little while. And they were like, what does your husband do? She goes, he's a comedian. And then the one guy said, your, your husband's not the machine, is he? He's a Russian guy. And Leanne goes, are you being serious? And he goes, wait, are you being serious? Your husband's the machine. He's our neighbor. Your husband's the machine? And she goes, yeah. And then he says to the guy in Russian, oh my God, her husband's the fucking machine. And the guy lights up and he goes, your husband is the machine. Like the guy that robbed the train. She goes, yeah. And he goes, do you know that me and my friends, we play that when we drink to go out? We play that. And I was like, and she was like, yeah, so I just got it subtranslated into Russian subtitles. So I'm going to do a Russian tour. Once again, haven't announced that yet either. And so. And you're going to try like, to do the bit in Russian. I'm going to try to do, I was going to try to do the bit in Russian, but then these guys were like, no, 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 just tell it in English. Just tell it in English. It yeah. won't translate. It won't be as funny because yeah. Russian, the language, this is going to sound very racist. The language wasn't allowed to grow under communism. Mm -hmm. So there was not a lot of slang. So the Russian, the language is very literal. Hence why when I said I was the machine, it was so funny, this guy, because I just went, I'm a car. And he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, nothing makes sense. You couldn't say like, you couldn't, there wasn't a lot of slangs. So he was like, no, just have him tell it in English. And he was like, wait, 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 wait. He's going to Russia? And Leanne's like, yeah, he's going to Russia. And he's like, oh, you got to let me know. I'm going to have my whole family come out, my whole friends. So my pipe dream is I'm going to put tickets on sale in Russia and I'll end up doing a stadium and fucking their president's going to come out and be like, the machine. Yeah. I, that's my pipe dream. Yeah. Now, mind you, I think we're only going to have a, we're doing like a 200 seater, but, <laughs> but, and also the president's a super chill dude and he might <laughs> enjoy. Do you know what weird fucking shit he could get me to do? I'm sure he could force you to do it. I, I bet he could get me, just coerce me like, hey, Bert. You take off shirt and uh, you you hold girl down and like be like Go hold this whore and I'd be like sure thing Vlad. <laughs> hey, hey hey come here come here one more time this guy does anything no fucking for real hey uh hey get naked and hold other men like close naked both <laughs> naked right and then spit on hand rub on cock and go hey welcome to Brokeback Mountain motherfucker they they would make you do that and and you know what it would happen you would do it I do it all yeah I would do it I have no backbone yeah well I mean with Vlad there. I think everybody would do it. You're going to die if you don't. If I will, by the way, I will hardcore drop everything to party with Vladimir Putin. He's putting that out there too. Hardcore. When I'm in Russia, I will go out of my way to, if he says, 
hey, me and you ride horses shirtless. Hey, a dacha, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. be like, fucking paidion, bitch, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. Um, Birdie Boy Tours going. Go to burtburtbirt.com. This week, Schenectady, uh, Bel- Wilkes-Barre, uh, two shows the at the Beacon Theater, two shows at the Constitution Hall. Dar. Yeah. When do you go back on tour? I have uh, in, a, in, a, in in English. I have Vegas this weekend at the Mirage Terry Fator Theater. Ooh, ooh! I'm curious to get your and notes then, on the Terry Fator Theater. Yeah, yeah. I've only opened there before. It's been a long time. Who'd you open for? Tosh. Really? Yeah. A few. It's been a it's been a few years. Jesus. Um, but that's where he did too. I really liked it when I did it. I liked it too. It's one of my favorite places. By the way, Boys to Men is right across the hall from you. Yeah, yeah. That they, they uh, I went to their show before. For real? Yeah. I guess they've been there for a minute. So. They they are. They sang at Kobe at. No. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They sang at Kobe's thing. Mm-hmm. They're fucking amazing. Yeah. Those guys still have it. Yeah, they do. They really do. It's like that's like a God given gift that you got to appreciate in a man like that and men like them mm-hmm. to not smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol. You're in the showbiz. You could easily fucking ruin your voice. Yeah. That they still have their voices. It's like, dude. I know. Kind of makes you think about your own voice, probably, right? Yeah. Kind of. I've been losing it all week. All right, uh, tomsuper.com slash tour for those tickets. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. I love you. I love you too. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.